What's up, Qso here, bringing back the 40 out of 40 challenge guide video, even though I said I wouldn't do on this league. Now, these videos usually tend to drag out to the uh, one hour mark, uh, because I like to be thorough, so there's gonna be timestamps down below. Uh, I don't really have that much more to say, uh, except that this time around I will be skipping some of the uh, challenges, like, you know, the more obvious ones. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, skill up, skipping that. Defeat Arch Nemesis 1. Pretty self explanatory. Exile against the world. Also pretty ex self explanatory. Defeat these act bosses. Also self explanatory. Explore the labyrinths. Uh, should be pretty uh, self explanatory. We just need to find a, a silver chest and open that inside the lab. Uh, we also need to find a dark shrine. Now, dark shrines are typically uh, hidden, so if you go to poelab.com and, you know, you select whatever lab you want to do, so let's say Uber, and you want to look for the red Ds, these marks where uh, which rooms has a dark shrine. Obtain at least three treasure keys from defeating Isaru a single time. This means that he needs to be fully buffed. Uh, so, you know, the two events before you actually kill him, the third time you need to, you know, just fully buff him. Exile against the world 2. We need to walk through a mirror of delirium. Uh, we need to find an abyss, uh, chase that around for about a few hours until it finally stops and gives us the abyssal trove so we can open that. Uh, we also need to complete a heist contract, which we do by, you know, collecting these random things you'll take the contract with you you will then cl click a rogue market coin that will take you to the uh, rogue harbor then we'll find a dia we'll prepare a heist slap that thing in choose whoever you know we want to do and then sign contract and then you walk in and complete it complete a vol side area uh, these can be found randomly in maps, they can be found randomly while it's leveling up. They're usually marked with uh, like a red icon on the map. And sometimes you can have some uh, nasty added uh, map mods. So we just need to run through to the end, kill the boss, uh, click the vessel, and almost said bada bing bada boom. Defeat these act bosses, we know that. Unlock the map device, we should know that because we just complete the campaign, all 10 acts. We do one map mission, I believe, with Kirak, and then we can use our own map device in our own hideout. Exile against the world, we need to find uh, a legion pack. Uh, we don't need to defeat it, we just need to awaken it. Uh, defeat a metamorph. Uh, Unearth an expedition encounter, so all three of these are super common. Uh, well hydrated, have 5 flasks of at least magic rarity and 20% quality. So you can see we have 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. And then one flask also needs an enchantment. Now you can get enchantments from uh, harvest, or you can use an instilling orbs, and these drop like flies. So you just slap that on onto a random flask, and there you go, you now have an enchantment equip done. Defeat Arch Nemesis 2, so we need to find all of these random uh, things that are part of recipes, use them. Uh, the super, super rare one seems to be, I can't find it, but Frenzy and Chaos Weaver. Jesus, I've been looking for those like a madman. Uh, Blood Letters also kind of, yes, yeah, so there's a few super rare one is, but you just map, 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 and they should drop. Power overwhelming. Now the easiest way to do this is to use a bitter dream because what bitter dream does is it has a shit ton of support gems in it. So it, it, whatever you slap on here is supported by bone chill, hypothermia, ice bite, cold pen, added cold, and inspiration. So we'll just take a skill gem, freezing pulse, for instance, slap that in. This needs to be linked. And then we're gonna just slap on additional support gems that aren't in the weapon itself. And then we need to equip it. Because this guy right here tried a bunch of different combinations on these two slots. And I could not get the challenge because I was dumb enough to not try and equip it. And to be fair, it doesn't specify that, you know, it, I need to have it equipped, but whatever. 
Enchanted Arsenal, equip enchanted items from five of the following item classes. So with amulets you can anoint uh, notables with uh, oils. Uh, belt, you will need an upgraded uh, offering to the goddess that is a dedication to the goddess that allows you to also enchant belts. Uh, body armor we can uh, get from uh, harvest. Yeah, like this one for instance, enchant uh, body armor quality does not increase defenses, grants, you know, X per X quality, that type of thing. Uh, boots you can enchant in lab. Uh, gloves you can enchant in lab or you can get breath stealer uh, and then you can anoint it that counts as well uh, Helmet lab uh, ring uh, uh, oil anoint weapon uh, There is heist uh, Enchants, I don't remember what it is. I've never really used them, but you can also do with harvest like up here somewhere I have enchant a weapon uh, you know Increase elemental damage per quality or AOE per quality, that kind of stuff. Defeat, uh, defeat, defeat Arch Nemesis 3. Defeat Arch Nemesis monsters with four of the following combinations of modifiers. So we need to slap on a certain amount of um, certain recipes, such as Executioner, Mirror Image, Soul Eater, and Trent Horde for, you know, the last one, for instance. And I am going to link you down below a... Uh, to a site that is amazing for this. So well, what do I need for Executioner? So we'll just type in Executioner, click that, and you can see here to get Executioner, we need to use Frenzied and Berserker. Uh, we also can see what it is used in. So we use execu Executioner in Empowering Minions and Tukahama Touched. Uh, we will be coming back to this website uh, a little bit later in this uh, challenge guide video type thing, but yeah. So just use that site to uh, complete these. Uh, some of these requires a shit ton of different uh, kind of rare recipes too. Um, I just sort of accidentally worked my way backwards. Uh, I was actually collecting all of them but because I didn't read that I only needed four out of the one, two, three, four, five, six. Achieve ascension. That just means we need to complete all four labs. Uh, complete vendor recipe. So, uh, boots with increased movement speed modifier. So what we need for that is, I believe it's this. So we need a uh, random pair of boots that has increased movement speed on them. It, it only needs the movement speed on there. They can be blue. Uh, the movement speed cannot exceed 25%, I believe. So we vendor the boots along with a random Quicksilver along with an Augment. And now we get you know, an upgraded, so 20% becomes 25%. Uh, exalted Shard, the recipe for that is not what I thought it was, because I uh, I think I had 15 Exalted Shards and I bought the last five. Well, I just combine them, recipe done. No, that's not how you do it. The way you do it, let's get rid of these, is you need a, um, you, you do it exactly like the Chaos recipe. So you need a full set of gear that is influenced and influence needs to be the same on all of the pieces. So here I have a Crusader on every single piece. So we got boots, two rings, an amulet, one belt, body armor, headpiece, gloves, and a weapon. And here is a different uh, influence, Elder, I believe. So if we vendor all of these, it is going to give me Exalted Shards. However, if I don't do all of them, it is going to give me the usual chaos slash regal recipe instead. So we'll just slap in the correct belt, get the exalt charge, and boom! Hybrid flask, we vendor a mana flask alongside with a life flask and a fusing. Now, uh, I'm told the, the mana and life flask needs to be of the same tier, but I tried lower versions of a mana flask and it still gave me a hybrid, so... Jewel. This is going to be... I'm going to do this at 2 and a 1 here. So, for the jewel... Uh, well, you just uh, vendor... You do the uh, 5 of 1 recipe. Now, all of these has to be the same rarity. Uh, they have to be of the same jewel, too. 
and it gives me a dual. Now, what happens if when we do four of the same rarity and slap in a different rarity? Well, we don't get one. So, uh, I'm actually not gonna vendor because I'm gonna show you how to do the orb of scouring recipe uh, the easiest way. Uh, so to do the orb of scouring recipe, we need a rare item with only two affixes on there. And the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is a jewel. Uh, or, well, I mean, you can do it with any item, really. It's just, yeah. Jewel just seemed easy. So we just alt spam until we get one affix, and then we just regal. So now there's two affixes. We vendor that, and we get a scour. A six-socketed item. Now this might confuse me a little bit. There's no recipe to get a six-socketed item. Because uh, I thought, well, you just vendor the six-socketed, I guess. You get, take the jewels. Nope, that doesn't count. What you do is you do the whetstone recipe. Now, uh, we'll do this. What well, could have done from here? We need a rustic sash, a whetstone, and a weapon. And the weapon needs to be six-socketed. So if we vendor all of this, nothing really happens, right? Because the belt decides the rarity. Because what it does, this recipe, is it adds percent fist damage. And the rarity of the belt decides how high this goes. So if we uh, scour this, and remember it was 48, I believe. So now we made it a little bit better, and it goes up to 63. Complete Kirak missions. Now this is, well, as self-explanatory as it is. So we talk to Kirak, Atlas missions. And then we just look for, you know, down here in this thing here, what we're looking for, if we need to kill, uh, I don't actually remember what you need to do, but yeah, we'll, we'll look for like an expedition, it doesn't matter what tier it is, different things. Now, uh, what you can do to uh, speed up the process, which one do I really like not want to use? Actually, I don't want to use any, either one of them because I have a map in there I want to run later. But we can use Explorer Scouting Report to re-roll the, the missions to try and chase down the one we really want. Uh, now we don't have to complete all of them because to defeat the Breach Lord requires, uh, what's it called? An otherworldly uh, scouting report to even try and uh, roll that thing. And we can get that from, actually I think I know exactly where it is. I think it's here. So you would need Expect the Unexpected to have a chance to get that one. However, uh, it's probably easier to just do the other five. Investigate Eldritch Altars. So we need to use, you know, the altars that we find inside the maps. Ten, uh, ten times in uh, Eater Worlds and ten times in the Searing Exarch. Uh, you can only find them by slapping on the influence here that you have on your map device. And there will surely be a video in the background showcasing what the altars look like. Increase the quality of a weapon or piece of armor to at least 28%. Now there's two, three ways you can do this. Uh, you can either, I don't believe I have one, but you can either do a beast recipe to corrupt a weapon to 30%. I do not seem to have it right now. Uh, you can also use fossils. Uh, you can use perfect fossils to try and reroll it. Uh, or you can use Hillock in either. Uh, Hillock in Fortification will enchant your armor, armor piece to 28%, and Transportation will enchant your weapon to 28%. Defeat Atlas Bosses 1, the Black Star and the Infinite Hunger. So these are two uh, bosses that you will face before uh, the Searing Exarch and... Uh, Eater of Worlds. So as you progress uh, the influence, you can probably zoom in here. As you progress these influences, uh, you will face off those bosses first, I believe, and then uh, eventually you will face Eater of Worlds and Searing Exarch themselves. Transform items. Assemble a Harbinger unique item. So we do this by, well, I don't think we like to complete the channel. Challenge, we genuinely don't want to run an endless amount of beachheads to get the exact pieces we need to drop. Uh, but we can buy them uh, off of trade, and we just combine them, and we're done. Uh, use Jorian's crafting bench to create a talisman in a syndicate research safe house. Uh, the clue is right there, so what we need is we want 
excuse me, Jorgen connected to research. And then once we do the safe house, he's going to allow us to um, craft that talisman. Use a harvest craft to change an item into another item. So this would be change uh, a random unique into another random unique. Uh, I believe you can do change uh, like transmute to what, what does it usually do? Well, chisels to vol orbs and stuff like that. So any of those harvest crafts. Use a vial to transform a unique item in the altar of sacrifice in the temple of Etzotl. So for this, we need a tier three uh, sacrificial chamber alongside a vial uh, and the corresponding unique to that vial. So uh, vials drops off of the Omnitech, which is the last boss in the temple. Um, they're very rare drops and there's multiple different uh, vials, multiple different types of vials. I, did, I fucked up that, that sentence, whatever. So for vial of the ritual, for example, we would want to use uh, Dance of the Offered Boots. Uh, so we use the vial and the boots inside the altar, and that then gives us the Omeo can. Now, in my case, I used the uh, sword, Fate of the Vol, to upgrade that. Because, I don't know, it was just cheaper, and I... It was cheaper to buy the, the sword, because the, um, the boots that we need, they are like 40 to 50 chaos. So, this is the cheaper outcome. Use an Ancient Orb. Just use an ancient orb. So we need an ancient. I don't have an ancient orb. I have some shards. So you know we just run harbinger. Uh, we either get harbinger on the atlas, or we can use scarabs uh, until we get enough splinters or shards to create an ancient orb. Or we can just buy the orbs. I think they're fairly cheap right now. Reach level ninety. Map 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 map. Activate Eldritch Beacons. So these three right here are these three things right here. So I've already done 30 Maven. Uh, so I just need to do like 10 more of these and 10 more of these. Jewel Master. So we need to socket each of the following types of jewel. Crimson, Viridian or Cobalt. So those three are uh, the more common ones. I don't think I actually have a single one of those on me. Well, <laughs> uh, an Abyss Jewel, we do have that. Uh, this, In my case, I am stacking uh, Ghastly Jewels. Uh, we need to equip a Cluster Jewel. I do have a Cluster Jewel here. And we also need to equip a Prismatic Jewel, which is a, a watcher's, watcher's Eye. I need some coffee or something, I can't speak. And we need to equip a Timeless Jewel. Uh, and those drops from uh, Legion Encounters. The uh, You need to, to use the... Uh, the, hello, the emblems. Uh, either run like, a, I don't know, like a one-way, two-way, four-way. And hope to get a Jewel drop. Uh, you could, for instance, use a Elegant Hubris. Uh, a Glorious Vanity. One of those types of Jewels. Craft each of the following Eldritch Implicit Modifiers types on a item. So these are the new items introduced this league, uh, which are the influence items like the Lesser Eldritch, Grand Eldritch, the Ember. Uh, I don't think Chaos Orb was in this one, but yeah. So Grand Eater of Worlds, I believe I already have something like this. So we'll just slap one of these on there and it changes the I can't actually use my mouse pointer but it changes the implicit and boom we just need to do that on all of the currencies boon of the atlas one now here's where we're gonna need to spend some time on the atlas passive tree activate a covetous shrine so we type in cove it should light up there so we need this node to even have a chance to spawn it so we uh, grab all that glitters and then we just run domination. Uh, I believe you even do you have scarabs for dominate. You don't have that for scarabs. I believe 
no, there's no domination scab. So you just run the uh, sauna mod option for domination. It didn't take me that many maps to, to get mine, I believe. Capture at least 15 beasts in a single area. Again, uh, we need to pick up another. Oh, dude, I should. Uh, I think it's here. Great migration. So we need great migration. So this areas with ANR missions have 8% chance to uh, contain additional packs of beasts instead of other monsters. So we take that note and then we run Beast Yari on the map. Uh, this one took uh, quite a while for me. It took me like 10, 15 maps before it spawned and I was able to capture 22 beasts with that one. Defeat a bounty target pack. Bounty tar, where do you light up? So way up here, uh, we have the smuggling route. Areas have 10% chance to contain a bounty target pack. Defeat a rogue metamorph. So we would like to take the, I believe, yes. We need escaped experiment. And then we could run scarabs to quicken the process. Defeat a Vol Flesh Merchant. We need an incursion node, which is... Nope. This one. Uh, Vol Oligarch, whatever that means. So, whenever you do incursions, uh, there is always going to be a Vol Flesh Merchant in there. Now, this little son of a bitch is slippery as shit. Uh, he likes to disappear randomly and just fly around so it's been multiple times where I've gotten him down like 20% and then he just vanishes but well, oh my good I killed him uh, and then you know I leave the incursion and I don't get my reward because he's been playing World of Warcraft and uses vanish so uh, be very careful uh, or rather be very mindful if you actually killed it or not Defeat a monster holding a deafening essence, uh, so this would be easiest, but first of all we do have, you could grab this, Aris contain an additional essence, that means there's always going to be an essence in your map, and what you could do then is, is it shrieking? You want to find a shrieking essence, and then uh, remnant of corruption, and hope it upgrades. Unless there is, I haven't actually looked, unless there's like another, they have three additional, a crystal lattice would help. Oh, amplified energies, that would also help. So you would grab prolific essence and then uh, amplified energies to speed the process up, that is, unless you're in a hurry. Otherwise, you can just not pick them up and uh, hope you hit it with that corruption. So for defeat a wild harbinger boss, you would like to grab first wave. Harbingers in Ares have 25% chance to be replaced by a powerful harbinger boss. Then you run the scarabs, harbinger scarabs. Drop a blood filled vessel from a ritual, I believe is over here. Completing the final ritual altar in Ares have 10% chance to drop a blood filled vessel. Uh, so I ran, I had a shit ton of uh, master mission, free master mission saved up from Harvest, so I just ran Ritual all day. Uh, so this little bastard here took, I kid you not, it took like 15 maps before I dropped one. Uh, open a hand of a Seshula, whatever that is, I believe it's down here somewhere. If we just search for Ula. Uh, call of Seshula, so you would want that one, and then just slap in Scarabs with Breach. Open a, a Operative Strong Box, I think it's up here somewhere. It's not lighting up, but well, it's in the middle. We would want Secret Operations, and then you just run uh, Ambush Scarabs until you find one. Uh, these seems to be fairly common actually, I think I'm getting, I still have uh, I have the ambush nodes here, so I'm getting one of these like every five maps or so almost. So I got like a bunch of these um, in one go, sort of. So I would run ambush uh, scarabs with metamorph scarabs, and I would then run also domination uh, and ANR missions. So, <laughs> so yeah, you. If you're lucky, you can get all of them at the same time, almost. 
complete unique maps, uh, either use the scouting report, uh, get luck with drops, or buy them from trade. Defeat Atlas Bosses 2, we need to defeat the Eater World and the Searing Exarch, and to do that, uh, we first need to you know, run all of these uh, influence, and eventually they will spawn. Uh, fur further down below uh, on a different ch challenge that we're gonna get to soon, uh, I will link some guides to these uh, four bosses actually, because there's uh, two before these two. Uh, not my videos, but it was the best ones I could find. Allocate Atlas passives, we need to put in 100 points into the Atlas passive tree, uh, we get we get one Atlas passive skill point for each map we complete. Uh, alongside, I do believe we also get it for opening up uh, the favored map slots. I think you get an Atlas passive there too. Night Terrors, uh, very very important. First of all, uh, it needs to be a, it needs to be a zone level eighty one or higher. So this is tier fourteen and above. So. Amana mana 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 is uh, an abyssal depth boss. Now the problem with this one is there's two different abyssal depth bosses. So what you want to do is you want to spam your uh, abyssal scarabs. Uh, I don't I don't know if there's do we have abyss this league? I haven't even looked what we have. We do have abyss, and I still have some free crafts. Uh, so you just want to spam that until. You get an abyssal depth and then hope there's a boss in there. So far, I've only had one boss and that was the wrong boss. And I've done probably 20 scarabs now. <laughs> uh, we need to, to defeat Kurgal. That is a delve boss. And you can find him. Oh, I haven't delved on this guy. I've delved on the other one. So I'm going to have to scroll like a mother. Uh, they have buffed delve. So there's more cities, more bosses. Uh, not that I've really noticed. But yeah, we have Kurgal down here, for instance. Uh, that is the, um, what is it called? The Abyssal City is where he spawns. And this is as, yeah, 140, 150 depth. You don't need to get that far to find him. Uh, I actually had another one, it was like here. Is it Tomb? The other one's a chamber. Yeah, so that, I had one over here and then I have one over here. <laughs> Uh, I completely forgot about this guy. I was gonna. I was, save, I was saving this guy for uh, another video. Uh, Ol Ross, Origin of the Fall. That is an expedition boss. So we need to run logbooks uh, and apparently a very specific logbook. Uh, first of all, it needs to be an 81 plus. So I only have like a 73 and a 77. So 81 plus, and it needs to have Knights of the Sun in there. Uh, and I don't think I have either one of those on the two that I have found. But yeah, it needs to be uh, Nice Little Sun and 81 plus, and I think these are going for like 5x, so you better run those expedition scarabs. Uh, the Syndicate Mastermind, that would be uh, Katarina. Uh, you just run this one here. Now, uh, you want to make sure that you run enough red map so that the area is going to be 81 plus because the uh the missions can i get that quick uh yeah it's probably easier on the map device can't really zoom here so the missions the rarity of the missions uh, white yellow red matters uh, it, it affects the zone level that uh the mastermind is going to be so make sure you're running uh i think for some reason like tier 11 works but to be sure, run tier 14s plus uh, June missions. Uh, not really sure how many you need to run, but you know, fill up each each safe house, each of the four safe houses to be sure. Uh, Ul Nettle needs to be Ul Nettle is an 80, uh, 75 zone. Sorry. Now what you want to do here is uh, you want to use. It that fled, attached to research, 
uh, and he needs to be, I think he can be just a one star, but there's no reason why you shouldn't go for a three star, and there's no reason why you shouldn't really grab the syndicate stuff either. Uh, yeah, test of loyalty, but kind of depends where you are in the tree and what you're doing with the tree, but a suggestion, because that means they're getting uh, two ranks instead of one. So you then take your uh, normal, I don't have a nettle, but you, you take you take your normal breach stone, and then you can upgrade it to a pure. So that is going to, a, a pure nettle is, I wanna say it's a 83 zone, but I could be wrong, it could be 81 only. So maybe you do need, actually, it should be an 83, shouldn't it? I'm a little bit uncertain about the different uh, levels here because they enriched and pure. And... Boons of the Atlas 2. Defeat a Delirium boss and a Beyond boss within 10, 10 seconds of each other. Now, what we could do is we jump into the Atlas again and we grab the Beyond nodes, uh, like Torn Veil, I believe, and Scent of Blood. You then make sure that your map your delirium map uh, has beyond on it and you then just hope to get lucky i did this one last and i didn't, I didn't even know that i did it because i was i had some i had some white uh, delirium maps like i can't just let them sit there i'll run them and see what i get uh defeat a legion sergeant while completing a ritual so uh what we want to do is where's the first dude all these new tabs are confusing me scarab is where we want to be legion so we have legion scarabs so we run that with ritual and to make things a little bit easier on ourselves we want to grab occult devotion this means we will always have four ritual altars you then want to run a fairly tight map uh like uh is it graveyard City Square is like the first thing on my mind, but we have, I, I keep confusing the two maps, but yeah, you, you, a tight map. And uh, hope to get lucky. Uh, Haunted Mansion worked for me. So on my Haunted Mansion map, they spawned like right on top of each other. So I didn't really have to do much. So what you do is you first uh, awaken the Legion. That's what you do first. And then you make sure that it is on top of the ritual and then once you've killed the legion, you then run the ritual. Uh, what you could do if they're not on top of each other is you awaken the legion, uh, you find a sergeant, uh, and you kite him on top of the ritual, kill him there, and then run the ritual. Have three active shrine buffs. Oh, we're not there yet, I'm sorry. Defeat four syndicate members, including a leader, in a single encounter. So this one's a little bit random, so you just want to make sure you have enough rivalry and... Uh, you know, group them together. So let's say if I ran for, uh, if I get transportation, I have four of my guys here. So if I'm lucky, all four should show up. It's just that the leader rarely follows. So um, like nine out of 10, I would only get three, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, you just wanna make sure you have rivalries in between. Uh, I don't really have that much rivalry because if I do then run, if I get transport, uh, I will get these three, and then, as you can see, Elrion has rivalry with Vrichi, so Vrichi might jump in. So, it's a bit, that one's a bit random. Uh, 45 minutes in, I, and I had to make sure that, hey, am I actually recording? <laughs> anyway, uh, have three active shrine buffs at once. So, for this one, I, once again, we want to move into the uh, little Atlas tree here, and then we want to look for shrine. I don't remember which one it is. Nope. There is one node. Yes, this one. So you want uh, syncretism. Syncretism? Syncretism. So you want this one. And uh, I did this on City Square, because you want like a tight open map. I su suppose stuff like Canyon would work too. Uh, I then looked for the first shrine, did not grab it. Looked for a second shrine that was close by. Uh, I then clicked the first shrine and then quicksilvered as fast as I could to the other shrine and I got the challenge. Open a temple of Etzotl with at least four tier three rooms. So what we want is four tier three rooms in one. So here, for instance, I've only run, I've done one mission and I have two tier uh, threes already. 
So what you want is once again you want to move into the atlas and uh, don't skip, don't skip now. Uh, where are all the incursions? Uh, I think it's actually yeah, it's like this wheel down here. Contested development, killing resident architects in areas adds to their upgrade tier, adds your upgrade tier to the surviving architect's room. And then we have resource reallocation, killing non-resident architects. So what this means is when we, uh, I wish I could like actually show you a little bit better. You know what? I will show you a little bit better. Let's pop. I have, do I have a white mission? Uh, Alright, so we have ourselves an ally mission. So we'll look at the uh, top right here. So this is the non-resident. And this is the, uh, well, resident. So whenever we, with the, those two nodes, whenever we kill this guy, uh, if I change the sparring room, uh, I have now a 40% chance that when I do get the sparring room, it's already tier two. And well, this isn't the best example because both of them are changed, but let's say uh, this room up here is uh, a gem cutter, like we have down here. Uh, and it is now currently tier one uh, with the other node with um, Jesus with the contested development by upgrading here I have a chance of uh, I have a, I think I have like a 50% chance it should be a hundred but I don't know why it's not but I have a 50% chance of uh, immediately making this room to tier three so instead of a tier three I immediately get a tier three. So the strategy you want to use here uh, to try and get the four tier threes, which by the way isn't difficult, uh, the strategy is never change. Never change the room, because when you change uh, the room, you are going to add more rooms that are going to be the option um, that is going to be given, given to you as an option. So as soon as you get one tier three, one tier three room, you can no longer get this room. So it's going to roll either one of the other ones. The more tier three rooms you have, uh, the less options you have out of these rooms to be given to you. So never never change, always upgrade to get the uh, the four tier three rooms. Oh, let's see if this makes it into the video. So currently we have a tier one gem cutter. We have the passives, so we're not gonna upgrade and let's see if we uh, get a tier three immediately. And we did defeat the Elder Slayer. So we need to defeat Baran, Beritania, Alhazim, and Drox while the area has at least 80% item quantity. So we have a Drox map here. So the item quantity currently on this map is 58. So we need that to be 80 and above. Uh, one way to get these is when I did this, I had a shit tonnery of scouting reports. So I just did. Uh, I just rerolled until I got like the, uh, the guardian that I needed. Uh, we also need to uh, defeat Maven's Invitation, the Elder Slayers, while the area has at least 60% item quantity. So we need to get the uh, Invitation drop. I'm not sure how rare this one is, but I have one at least. So I just need to do Veritania and Alhisim, and then pray I can actually pull it off. And then we just straight up have to kill Awakener, Cyrus, Awakener of Worlds. And we can do that by killing his uh, guardians, which is, well, Baron, Vertania, Elhasim, and Rox. And they now drop fragments. Uh, I believe these are the fragments. So you put these fragments in their map, and you get to fight Cyrus, which I believe is now automatically like level 8 or something. Use five of the following currency items. We need to use an Eldric Chaos Orb, Eldric Exalted Orb. Uh, so again, we only need to use five of them. And these are the new influence types orbs. Uh, the more, most expensive one here is actually Exceptional Eldric Icker. I don't know why. This one is like 50 Chaos each. The rest were between 20 and 30 Chaos. Uh, I think the annulment. No, the chaos was like eight chaos, five eight chaos, annulment or something similar. Uh, the exalted orb was all something like eight or ten chaos, so it's fairly cheap to buy. Uh, 
unlock every favorite map slot so that would be all of these so i have unlocked some of them actually i've unlocked more than i thought i did i don't have no other one but uh so the first one is complete a tier 16 map very simple uh we need to kill an elder guardian uh, that is uh, enslaver eradicator constrictor or the purifier and again uh to do this the easiest way is to just re-roll Kirak missions with the uh, scouting reports. Uh, we also need to kill Shaper's Guardians, which is Chimera, Hydra, Phoenix, Minotaur. Uh, again, scouting reports or run tier 14 plus maps and hope they drop. Uh, we need to kill Cyrus Guardians, we just mentioned them. Uh, but then we also need to kill Cyrus. Uh, we also need to do the Cortex, which... Uh, is a random drop. There's also a card. Um, <laughs> uh, justified ambition. This is actually I turned. I just did one turn in, and this is where I got my cortex. So if you're lucky, uh, I'm not sure if they're that expensive. I'd say the first lines are price fixers, so we're looking at 10k as a card. Mm, could be. Uh, we then need to kill Elder in the Shaper's Realm, and that is Uber Elder. So to do that, we need to kill Shaper for to get two specific fragments. Uh, Knowledge, and I forget what the other one's called, and then we need to kill Elder uh, for two fragments, which is Emptiness and whatever the other one's called. <laughs> we need four fragments. Uh, we also need to defeat the Maven. Uh, which we do by completing, you know, the influence here, and we do have a little thingamajig to uh, show us how far in we are. We also need to kill Eater of Worlds and the Searing Exarch. I probably, yeah, I did that the other way around, doesn't matter. And then we have Defeat Arc Nemesis 4, and this is where uh, this amazing website comes into play again so you know we just look at well what do we need we need to do abras touched so we'll just search for ab abras click there and then it shows us first of all what we need so we need flame weaver and hasted to make a flame strider we need a gargantuan and a vampiric to make a rejuvenating and then we use flame strider frenzied and reju rejuvenating to get the abras touch uh, it's also very important that y you notice that this, the Abras Touched recipe is actually used in Kitaba Touched. And Kitaba Touched should be here somewhere. I know he's in here somewhere, I just don't know where. Uh, is it, is it in alphabetical by the way? Oh, it is. So yeah, we have Kitaba Touched up there. So you don't want to run the Abra's Touch immediately. You want to save the Abra's to make the Kitaba. Now for Kitaba, we need a shit ton of stuff. But yeah, uh, the, the site can be a little, it's a little bit hard for me to read sometimes, but yeah, you, you, you get the idea. Uh, link will be down below. Defeat Atlas bosses in style. So we need to kill the Black Star without being hit by Astral Avalanche. The Black Star, while the area has uh, monsters, have increased attack, cast, and movement speed. Now, I do believe we can... I, don't, I never really tested this, but I do believe we get an invitation, and we they can then roll the invitation. So we want to put Turbo on there. That's I'm guessing that's how you do it. Uh, I have only done the Black Star once, and I have only done Searing, Exarch, and uh, Eater World once. So I didn't really pay that much attention. Uh, an infant uh, hunger area has more mouse of life, yeah. Uh, I am going to link videos down below for strategies on how to kill the bosses. And from there, you should be able to deduct how to, you know, avoid the things we need to avoid. And I will do the same thing for the defeat Atlas bosses in style 2. I will link, link videos down below. And then we have Boons of the Atlas 3. This is basically an endgame grind. They basically did. They, they kind of like looking at the ending grinds. We're not there yet, but they they're kind of easy. So it feels like they kind of split them in two somehow. 
But yeah, we just need to, uh, what do we need? Three of the following. So I'm gonna do complete blighted maps, because I have a shit ton. Um, defeat Dell bosses, I'm guessing we can forget about that. Uh, I've delved a, a decent amount, and I've only found two. Defeat factions of the, uh, the domain, timeless conflict. That would be the Legion. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Legion. So one faction is one emblem. So four out of 100 means I've run one four way. Uh, defeat Metamorphs in Taint Laboratory. Um, I'm pretty sure you can, you can just buy random random organs honestly I haven't looked at mine here I have some but there's no way um, I might try and buy to get up to 60 I don't know it kind of depends no I only need three right yeah supply and maps uh, harvest plots of seeds uh, just run harvest I had a ton of harvest uh, on my atlas earlier but I don't really need harvest anymore so I got rid of them uh, so yeah every time you just need to do harvest 300 times basically and then use Atlas Scouting Report. Now, these drops like candy, and as you can see, I mean, I don't have that many left, but I've already used 83, and that's 83 of my own. So I will use Scouting Reports, Harvest, and then Blighted Maps. Uh, as for Endgame Grinds, Complete Trials uh, of Ascendancy in Maps. Pretty self-explanatory what we need to do there. I just need 10 more. Uh, complete Maps with four Sextant Modifiers. I've noticed, now I've been gone from the game for a full year, so uh, you can only sextant the Void Stones. Uh, and as we can see, I'm missing two vo Void Stones. So I need to kill Maven and I need to kill Uber Elder to get my last two. Uh, defeat Arch Nemesis monsters in area of level 83 and or higher, that would be these recipes. Uh, as you can see, it only says 10 out of 1,000 here. That's because I've been farming uh, master missions and stuff in uh, in tier on, uh, yellow tiered maps. That's pretty much all I've been doing. Uh, I've been farming recipes, a ton of different stuff, chaos recipe and a bunch of stuff. Uh, I've been focusing mostly on yellow tier maps, so that's why my number is low. Uh, defeat Elder Shape of Guardians in maps. Um, again, use the scouting reports to spawn them quicker. Um, my number is low because I don't have a very good boss killer. Uh, defeat Elder Slayers in maps. I honestly don't know what this means. Okay, quick Google. This is Cyrus's Guardians. Or we level to 100. So, do, did we hit the one hour mark? We did, but there's gonna be a ton of editing and holy crap, this is gonna take me like oh so many hours to edit because I have to add footage, I need to cut footage. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the video and I hope I have once again been helpful and I will see you when I see you. Bye!